Black Forest Soil Secrets Revealed. Transform your garden like a pro. Hey fellow gardeners, welcome back to Soil Sage Chronicles where we dive deep into soil secrets and gardening wisdom that actually works. Today, I want to share something that has fascinated gardeners for decades. The magic of black forest soil. But before you imagine some mythical forest dust that instantly makes plants grow, let's get real. The secret isn't magic. It's a combination of science, observation, and correct practice. By the end of this guide, you'll understand how to recreate some of that forest vitality in your own garden and give your plants the nourishment they genuinely need. What makes black forest soil so special? When we talk about black forest soil, we're referring to the dark, crumbly, fertile soil found in dense, mature forests. Its richness doesn't come from a single ingredient. It's a living system. The soil thrives because of three core elements. Media group, macro shot of soil texture showing organic material and moisture, diverse soil microbes under microscope, damp forest soil with organic debris of stock distribute equally high organic matter, diverse microbial communities, and consistent moisture cycles. Organic matter comes from leaves, twigs, and decomposed plant material constantly enriching the soil. These layers aren't just filler. They feed an invisible army of microorganisms that break down matter and release nutrients. Forest soil also maintains a stable, slightly acidic environment, perfect for microbial growth. Finally, the constant cover from leaf litter and canopy moisture ensures the soil doesn't dry out, creating a thriving micro-ecosystem that plants love. For gardeners, the key takeaway is simple. The forest effect can be replicated with the right inputs and care, and that's where fermented plant juice, or FPJ, comes in. FPJ. A gateway to forest soil power. If you've been following Soil Sage Chronicles, you know I love sharing practical ways to mimic nature in our gardens. FPJ, or fermented plant juice, is a cornerstone of natural farming. Think of it as a concentrated microbial and nutrient boost that stimulates growth strengthens plants and enriches your soil. The beauty of FPJ is that it allows you to capture the benefits of forest biodiversity in a simple, manageable form. But here's the catch. Success depends on correct ratios and proper preparation. Missteps can lead to wasted effort or weak results. Today I'll guide you step by step, so your FPJ becomes a reliable, powerful tool. Choosing the right ingredients. I often get asked which plants to use for FPJ. Let's break it down. FPJ can be made from leaves and young shoots or soft fruits and buds. Each has a slightly different effect on your garden. Leaf-based FPJ, like nettles, comfrey, or tender forest shoots, is fantastic for vegetative growth. Your plants will develop lush, deep green leaves and stronger stems. Fruit or bud-based FPJ, on the other hand, is richer in natural sugars and enzymes, which often promotes flowering and fruit set. The trick is to harvest healthy, pest-free material early in the morning before the sun dries it out. Avoid old or damaged leaves, they ferment poorly, and reduce the effectiveness of your FPJ. The perfect FPJ ratio. Getting your ratios right is essential. I follow the traditional natural farming ratio, 1 to 1 by weight of plant material to brown sugar. For example, if you harvest 1 kilogram of nettles, combine it with 1 kilogram of brown sugar. Brown sugar is key because it encourages a healthy fermentation process, while white sugar can produce weaker results and a less stable product. Once your FPJ is ready, the application ratio is just as important. For foliar feeding, dilute it to one part FPJ to 500 parts water. For soil drenching, a lighter dilution of 1 to 800, up to 1 to 1,000 is ideal. Small gardens? That translates to 5 milliliters per 2.5 liters of water, enough to cover a patch without overdoing it. Step-by-step -step FPJ preparation. Here's my tried and tested method that even beginners can follow confidently. Start by washing and chopping your plant material. Don't pulverize it. Coarse chopping works best for fermentation. Weigh your material, then mix it with an equal weight of brown sugar until it becomes a sticky syrup. Place the mixture in a clean container, loosely packed, and cover it with a breathable lid or cloth. This allows gases to escape while keeping contaminants out. Store it in a shaded cool spot for 5 to 7 days. You'll notice bubbling and a sweet tangy smell. That's your FPJ coming alive. 
After fermentation, strain the liquid into a dark bottle to protect it from light and store at room temperature. Congratulations, you now have a potent, forest-inspired soil and plant booster. So, let's talk about how to apply FPJ in your garden. Application is just as important as preparation, really. For a small garden, say around 10 square meters, I use 10 milliliters of FPJ and 10 liters of water for a soil drench. If you've got a medium garden, about 25 square meters, just scale up proportionally. You'll need about 25 to 30 liters of water with the same ratio of FPJ. And for those larger beds, maybe 50 square meters or so, you're looking at 50 to 60 liters of water. Foliar spraying is another excellent way to use FPJ. All you need to do is dilute it at a ratio of 1 to 500 and spray in the early morning or late evening just to prevent sunburn on the leaves. The goal here is gentle, even coverage, giving your plants a microbe-rich drink straight to their leaves while also lightly nourishing the soil underneath. Here's a tip I love sharing with my community side-by-side -side FPJ testing. Pick two identical plants, like tomatoes or peppers, and label them clearly. Apply FPJ made from leaves to one and FPJ from fruits or buds to the other. Make sure you keep every other factor constant. Same soil, same watering schedule, same sunlight. Over the next few weeks, track leaf color, stem strength, height, flowering, and fruit production. You'll start to see the differences emerge. Leaf FPJ encourages lush, vegetative growth, while fruit or bud FPJ often leads to better flowering and fruit set. This hands-on approach not only teaches you about FPJ, but also builds confidence in using natural inputs wisely. Once your experiment runs for a few weeks, take careful notes. Some gardeners assume one FPJ type is better universally, but it really depends on your plant type and goals. Leaf-based FPJ excels for leafy vegetables like spinach or kale. Fruit-based FPJ is perfect for tomatoes, peppers, and flowering plants. Remember, observation is key. Write down growth rates, leaf shades, or fruit size. Sharing your results in a community, like the Soil Sage Chronicles channel comments, helps everyone learn and reduces the spread of misinformation. One mistake I see often is using FPJ too concentrated. Overdoing it can stress plants rather than help them, stick to the dilution ratios and gradually increase frequency if needed. Another tip, never store FPJ in sunlight as UV rays can kill beneficial microbes. The secret behind black forest soil isn't a magic powder, it's the ecosystem approach, harnessed through careful observation, fermentation, and proper application. FPJ lets you mimic the forest's microbial richness and organic cycling in a practical way that any gardener can implement. By understanding the correct ratios, application methods, and plant-specific strategies, you'll see stronger growth, greener leaves, and better yields. The key is accurate information, experimentation, and patient observation. If you found this guide useful, don't forget to subscribe to Soil Sage Chronicles for more gardening secrets and experiments. Share this article with your friends and gardening groups and let's spread accurate, actionable soil wisdom everywhere. Your garden and your plants will thank you.